Hey, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from the internet. And together, the three of us, that includes you, we are Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club. Welcome and good morning, boys. Good morning, Homer. It is a incredibly hot and nasty day. Yeah, it's hot and it's humid. Has and it it's been? Hot. Has it been this hot here recently? Um, the last few days, we we had some rain uh, last week, which cooled things down. But uh, yeah, last it's 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 getting to be nasty, hot, sweaty, swampy. North Carolina summertime. Yeah, well, I, I've been on the road for the last four weeks. Just got back from Europe. I was two weeks uh, in Europe, what, one week in Germany and one week in Switzerland. And, ah, the uh, land of chocolate. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Finally gotten myself reacclimated at the time. And, of course, it doesn't make matters any better. Six hours different, but then I almost always seem to catch a cold or something on the plane coming back. So I came back with... A cold and a sinus, something going on. So finally, after a couple of days of uh, relaxing, I'm, I'm I'm kind of back to normal today. I think never normal. I still feel like I have a bucket of water on my head. Well, that's the humidity. That's, pr- <laughs> that's the, you do. It's the humidity. It's yeah. all of this. So before we talk a, a, a little bit about uh, <coughs> some things, I'd like to talk with you about. Let's do some smoking. Um, I brought back with me. Some tobaccos that I picked up in Germany. And actually, this one... It's getting tobaccos in the land of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Um, hold on. I got, I got, had fish. I got one in here. I, I did not get this in Germany. I picked that up. What uh, is it? About two months back, I think it was, uh, during Boontar's little thing, to uh, support your local uh, brick and mortar. I went over to the Pipe and Pint and picked this up. You, you, you picked this up. Locally. Locally, yes. It is. It's from London. Comoys of London, or Comoys of London. A gentleman's choice since 1825. It's cask number two, which I enjoyed. But anyway, um, while in Germany, I picked up this tobacco, Wolfsdorf. Oh, this has chocolate. Dorf. Yeah, that's what they all say. Chocolate and vanilla. The hint of port for a delightful smoking experience. Pork? Port. No, we know. I would I would tell so you. If that I'm one's not been open if you want pork. to pop that open. Give it a give it a whiff. So that that is a um, I'm sure it's a Cavendish of some sort. It is a superior blend of Virginia's Burleys and mild black Cavendish. There you go. This one's very fruity. this what I was trying to find was the German tobacco that I pick up in Nagold, Germany. And I was trying and trying and trying and couldn't find it at all. This was as close as I could find to a Fruit Loopy tobacco. But it's, Have you smoked this yet? A, yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It definitely smells of chocolate also. Yeah. yeah. A hint of NyQuil. Mm-hmm. It's got that that mm-hmm. cough syrupy... It's, like a, that fer- it's a fermenting that, that probably comes from the port... The yeah, port of it, London. It's got a, a hint of a hint of Nyquil. Try Here. this one, Wolfsdorf. You're a Wolfsdorf. Since 1907, it says you're a wolf. wolf also, we've wolf. got we got a moth, and I just saw a little gnat flying around here. So anything could happen. It's been open. It looks hey, like it's sealed. Guys, Ratchen fucht England and den Munchen in Erher Umberdergen Frigglehorn. Shaden Zoo. If anybody can interpret that for us, uh, please do. True words. But, Take uh, it. I, I meant. I meant it. That's uh, open on the other side here. <coughs> yeah, check this out. I mean, that is that's about as dark as they come. But give that a whiff. To um, to Northern Bohemian, who I know is going to ask. Yeah, I'm still sick. Uh, I went to the doctor this week and got some antibiotics, and they prescribed me an inhaler, which is not cheap. No. Um, so I must see if that that helps. I just started taking it today. Ooh, that Isn't that interesting. Yeah. So again, I was looking for something like our Fruit Loopy stuff. Uh, it's not not exactly the same, but it's interesting. It smells like raspberries. Raspberries. Oh, I've smoked it. I does, the, does it taste like raspberries? It kind of. Snozberries. 
Um, I also picked up snozzberries. Tastes like snozzberries. Some amphora red. Remember? Yes. We we smoked the stuff that Jackie made at JR's. Yes. Uh, to simulate this, and this is the actual stuff. Is it? Uh huh. I thought they didn't produce that anymore. No, it's not sold in the United States. Yeah. It's sold in other parts. Taste of the world. test. Sure. Do you still have some of the stuff that Jackie made? Uh, no, I smoked all that. Oh yeah. Finally, oh, it gave some of it away, right? Finally, from Switzerland. Switzerland. I picked up some some Savinelli Black Cavendish. So this was probably made in North Carolina or something. Yeah, you 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 should have gotten some Sutliff while you were over there. Some. Uh, there's. I can't see what anything about this. Anyway, I'm sure it's something that's available everywhere. Um, I was just looking for something interesting, and there's more words I don't know how to pronounce. So, a little bit about Germany, why I was there. Um, Have you opened this yet? Yeah. I've smoked everything except, for the, sure? except for the Amphora. I think so. Maybe. Nope. Maybe. Nope. Did I not open that? Nope. All right. As I've told you before, I work for a German company. Pocket Monkey. Excellent. And uh, I was over at the world's largest woodworking trade show. It's a, a show called Innerzoom. And it's in the town of Cologne, or Cologne, Germany. It's right on the Rhine River at about 9 o'clock, if you look at the dial. Look at the country of Germany as a dial. And um, uh, I guess I had, no, I've opened that. Look at that, I've opened that. Because I smoked that in Switzerland. That almost has no smell. No, it does. Get your nose up in there. <coughs> it almost has no smell. Well, co by comparison to some of these others, it doesn't. Um, I would say that that it probably really... has no casing in it. I don't know. Maybe it does. We'll have to read it. Anyway, world's largest trade show for woodworking. And um, basically what I had to do every day was to uh, put on a suit and my dress shoes and then walk two miles across the Rhine River. And then once you get to the actual convention center, you then have to walk through eight buildings to get to our building. Or now we are building number seven, seven buildings. Uh, the first time I was there, I worked there for several days. Finally, you know, would break away here and there to see the hall. And uh, finally, one of the guys I was working with said, so, you know, what, what do you think of the show? Man, it's amazing. I said, I finally got downstairs in our hall. He said, have you been to the other halls? No. I just thought we were, we're in building number seven. No, it's the whole, the whole enchilada. So just the hall that we were in is about as big as the U.S.'s largest woodworking show, wow. which is IWF that's in Atlanta every other year. And the, there were nine halls just filled with people in our industry. What's amazing about all this, no tools. The tool show is a week later in Hanover. Really? Yeah. So as big what as that is, showing off? as big as that is, it's all about materials, veneers. Uh, there's some fabric because there are people that are in this industry are also into upholstery. Sure. Um, you know, kitchen accessories. Um of course, anybody who makes a hinge, a drawer slide, um, decorative hardware, handles and knobs, they're all present. Um, sliding door hardware, lift up fittings, uh, you know, for doors that, that move up. Um, accessories for closets, accessories for garages. Um, anything you would ever find in your hotel room as far mm -hmm. as, you know, a wardrobe as opposed to a closet in Europe because they don't build a room for a closet they just build a cabinet for our closet called a wardrobe well those wardrobes are oh, i know where your mind's going <laughs> narnia yeah um you know, there's all kinds of hardware used from the locks to the hinges to the handles to inside all kinds narnia. of things for storing clothes it's it's just huge it's absolutely amazing and um so anyway i worked there my job was four times a day for one hour each time i gave tours of my employer's booth in English. Now I have a headset on, I look like Janet Jackson, 
and everybody who's with me has a headset on so they can hear what I'm saying. Do you have the uh, wardrobe mal- malfunction? I had one wardrobe malfunction. That no, wasn't that one. Oh. It's different. And, uh, and, and, and it was interesting. It's, it was people from all over the world. It wasn't just people that were visiting from the U.S. or Canada. There were people from Korea, Japan, um, Poland. I had somebody come up and, and have their picture taken me with me, who is a customer from Poland who knows me from the internet. Really? <laughs> from a, was, a, a, an uh, Aristocob customer? No, not an Aristocob customer. Okay. No, something completely different that's my, my employer related. But it was one of those weird things where somebody comes over and says, hey, one of my customers would like to have their picture taken with you. Okay. Why? Weird. Yeah, why? Because you're the bigger... Oh, they're a big fan of yours. What? And they, they came over and through this interpreter explained that they've read some things I've written on a blog and they've seen some videos. and Anyway, but not, not, nothing... Uh, they, just, they wanted to get a picture with the big American. <laughs> That's what it was. I said, no, my son's not here. Uh, so we should be smoking. Which of these, which of these things are we going to smoke? Well, um, I don't know. You've smoked them all. Which would you recommend? Um, the, the casing on the Waldorf and the commies uh, <laughs> seems a bit strong. Commies sounds a bit. Let's, let's go with let's strong. go with the one that oh, like, the, the, the black the, Cavendish this, that, this, that you don't even smell. Listen, yeah. So okay, I'll, I'll put these away. We'll smoke these some other time, but let's get these going. And what are we smoking these in? Pipes. The new Cobbett line, myself. which we finally have at Aristocob.com. We've been waiting patiently. I still don't smell uh, anything. We now have them. So, what do we have? We have the, um, this is the Dwarf, which is pretty much a Morgan pipe, but with a a, a bit of an angle and then a a bent stem. That's cool. That is cool. I like that one right there. Um, We're fans of the the Morgan. The Elf is Markman's Breakfast Club. A shape called the Rob Roy. The Rob Roy has this taper and the round over. And again, with a long vulcanized rubber stem, that's the elf. The Shire, which this excites me because it's the egg shape. Yeah. Right, that was discontinued. Um, and again, with that vulcanized rubber. And then the uh, the Wizard, which I've been smoking this one for a while now. Yeah. This is, this is one that Phil Morgan sent me quite a while back. But um, uh, what do I want to smoke? What do you want to smoke it in? I don't know. Just so you can see, there is a size difference. All, all they can see is your fat fingers. Well, you know, that's what I was trying to show off, actually. <laughs> you can see There's the size, size difference, difference um, in the stems. Okay. Oh, stupid fat fingers. Yeah. So, Morgan, I'm going to do one of these. Now <laughs> you can see clearly. It's like Freddy Krueger. Yeah, so they're not, they're not exactly they're not the same. same. Um, this... This shank right here is the one that fits the normal filtered pipe stem. So if I take that one out and I'll take a, a diplomat, I'm sorry, a Danish bit, that fits right in there, right? So the same thing go for the egg as well. Yes, the the only the, the organ only, looks different. That's right. That's a small what they what we call the slim bit. But this answers uh, two questions. The first one is. Can you buy this and smoke it with a smaller size bit? Yes. And can you buy this and put this stem or bit into a different pipe? Yes, you certainly can. Huh. So, um, I think I'm going to smoke. I'll smoke this one. I'll leave the egg for you, right? Because that's that's a, the Shire is kind of a special shape. Yeah. I was. You were hoping I'd do that, didn't you? No, actually. Uh, quite the opposite. Um, oh, you'd rather have this one? Well, I, so here's I, I like the egg. You know, you know my problem with the egg. I, I well, I don't know. Your problem with the egg is probably my problem with the egg. See what he did there too? Oh, I'm doing this favor for you, but I don't care for it. Uh, <laughs> my problem with the egg is, you know, the only time I, I ever really smoke is here, and I'm only smoking for, you know, a quarter of the time that we're together, half of the time that we're together. Um, the rest of the time, I'm setting my pipe down and talking with my hands and kind of on and off. You can't really set the egg down because it doesn't have a flat bottom. It, ding, it, ding, it ding, rolls ding. and it, it wants to lay on its side. That's problematic. 
that's problematic. But apparently, it's my problem now. Um, so I, I will smoke the egg. Obviously I love sort of... everything about the egg. The look, the feel, yeah. everything about it, except the fact that you can't lay it down. Yeah. It needs you need to have like a little a little resting place for it. So maybe what we need to do is to I'm find, gonna get like a ceramic let's, no, egg. Let's find triangle that. Thing. Let's find that leather um, that. thing that we got from uh, Basil. Well, we got one from Basil, but we also got one what? from Nate. Oh yeah, Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, well, we sure wasted a lot of time on that, didn't we? All, all right. right. Well, that's it for this Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. No, 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 no. No, because you, you were still telling us about Germany. About your trip. Well, the thing I love most about Germany, two things. I love the coffee. Coffee in Germany and Switzerland. Absolutely amazing, and I'm not sure why. Don't they all just use Keurigs? They do have some Keurigs. They, all, they do. Um, they also have the Nespresso espresso machine. You know what? Just to spite you, I'm smoking the egg now. Yeah, spite me. <laughs> um, and I don't know if it's the roast, the grind, the method that they use to produce it. The water. The water. It doesn't matter where you get a cup of coffee in that part of Europe. It's going to have crema on top. Mm. right? So um, Americans aren't familiar with crema because we use drip coffee makers and those Mr. Coffee filters absorb the crema. The crema is a combination of oil and uh, some other essential things. Oils. Oils <laughs> that float on top of the coffee. It we learned about like essential a, oils the other week, didn't yeah. we? It almost looks like a cream. And uh, like I say, it doesn't matter if you go to McDonald's or wherever, it's going to have that. And the coffee is amazing. And at McDonald's, which I'm a fan of Americans, American McDonald's coffee. Um, but man, the, their Mick Cafe stuff is just tremendous. The other thing I love in Germany is their breakfast. This is, 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 is breakfast, which um, the hotels will put out a little buffet. And uh, on that buffet, there'll be a lot of sliced, um, what we would call lunch meats, but they are a, a, a processed meat. Basically a sausage, and they'll have them sliced very, very thin. And there'll be 10 different kinds of sausages. Mm. Uh, and there'll be some liverwurst and some blood sausage and like six different kinds of things that I would look at and say, well, that's some kind of bologna, right? Lots of cheeses. There's there's going to be brie. There's going to be Swiss cheese. There's going to be... Gouda. It, it, it is Gouda to have all those cheeses. Um. And fresh fruit and fresh bread, so many different kinds of breads. Um, and they're not as scared to put out real butter either, which to me, bread is just a carrier for butter. Straight from the cow's teat. That's right. <clears throat> so um, I enjoy, I rarely eat breakfast in the U.S. I enjoy going in at the hotels and getting breakfast and drinking a bunch of coffee, getting myself hyped up for the day. My feet are killing me, still killing me. I got a knot on the ball of my left foot. Mm. And I got an ankle on my right foot that's killing me. And I couldn't figure out why my ankle was killing me until I realized I was walking on cobblestone a lot. Oh, so my ankles were constantly uh. adjusting. <coughs> we should be smoking uh, Hobbit's weed. In this. Oh, that's a good point. We should be. Would have been appropriate. Hey, what's the deal with this one? Hmm. So, you know, you're talking about all of these meats making me salivate a little bit. I had uh, something potentially scary happen the other day. Um, it's no secret that I'm a meativore, uh, a meatitarian, if you will. You um, only eat vegetarian animals, is that correct? No, I, 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 eat, meat a, I eat meatitarian you, animals, you too. You eat a chicken? Yeah. Yeah, heck yeah. Um, so the other day I was, um, at a wedding and it was kind of in a wooded area and, uh, two days later I found, uh, a tick on me. How my wife remove it with no problem. But the tick had a, 
a very distinguishing mark. It had a white dot on its back. Um, quick Google search turned up. It's a Lone Star Tick. Um, it's They say it's the only... The female Lone Star Tick is the one with the dot, and it's the only tick that really is easily discernible at yeah. a glance. Um, and uh, so the Lone Star Tick, the good news is it doesn't doesn't typically carry Lyme disease. Um, the bad news is it's becoming much more prevalent in the southeast United States. And the really bad news is um, it is the tick that's been associated with uh, people becoming allergic to red meat. So there was... I don't know, late last year, a few news stories mm -hmm. that people were developing meat allergies late in life and they didn't know where it came from and they discovered it's these ticks. Um, there's some sort of sugar enzyme that our bodies ignore. It's, it's present in red meat. Our bodies ignore it because it's just being processed through. But this tick, when it bites you, it, it, um, it puts transfers enzy that enzyme into your, into your blood right. and your blood rejects it. Your white blood cells start fighting against it. And so anytime your body detects the, its presence, it starts to freak out. So they say about four hours after eating red meat, once you develop the... It takes like weeks to develop the... It can, it can take 30 days or more. Mm -hmm. Just like Lyme disease. It takes a long time after you've been bit. Um, they say that uh, that about four hours after you eat red meat, um, you'll, you can get hives. You can get a rash. You can uh, your throat can swell up, just like if you had a, a heavy duty peanut allergy. Um, and they they say that that if you're bit more than once, um, it a ups the likelihood that you'll get the meat allergy, and also um, it prolongs the duration of it. So there's a guy that hasn't had red meat in 20 years because he mm -hmm. lives in a wooded area and he's bit by the things all the time. Um, but then you know. For if you're bit once, and if you get this condition, they say that uh, they say that it it lasts a short time, say six months to a year. Mm. I do mm. not like the idea of going a year without eating sliced sausage, or <laughs> or steak or hamburgers. Wow! Uh, so yeah, everything's fine now. I haven't died yet. Um, I've I've had red meat with no problem, but. Uh, they, they do say that it's becoming much more common. Um, the tick is much more prevalent in people getting this condition. Um, mm. That has become much more common. Wow. Well, yeah. well, we'll keep an eye out for oh. you. And, hey, I'll eat your share of the meat if I you, end, bet you, if you end up getting it. So not a problem. The meat will not go to waste. So one other thing I want to tell you about, I got back. And uh, over dinner the other night, was talking to my oldest grandson, Smuckers. Now, I have uh, three grandsons, a granddaughter, and in two weeks, a week, a week, uh, I will have less than six days. I will have a fourth grandson. This will be Seth's second contribution to the family of uh, another Markwood boy. We'll be able to have a Markwood Men's Breakfast Club and not even leave your house. Uh, yeah, and I I uh, I claim full responsibility. I, I I did all the work. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ask my wife. Well, speaking of wives, congratulations to Tom, the diabetic man. Yeah. His new new engagement. I would congratulate his fiance. Well, because, I know what she's getting uh, into. She's, she's gotten quite a quite a win there, and of course, I'm talking about child. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Congratulations, guys. So I'm talking with Smuckers and telling him a little bit about Germany. And one of the things that, that you do is you ride trains a lot. Lots of public transportation in variant, variant forms of trains or rail transportation. And I gave him a ticket that I had in my wallet for the train that traveled from my hotel or from the, the Bonhof, the train station near my hotel, to almost near the convention center. So if you didn't want to walk the two miles, you could ride the train a mile and then walk a mile and a half. <laughs> I I saw your video on that, that there was a, a conductor strike, mm -hmm. train strike. Yeah. Did that have it at a complete lockdown or no. it just slowed it down? Not a complete Only lockdown. half of them were striking? Even Well, no. I think if they have a con contractual agreement that they will keep mm. uh, a little bit a of percentage. a crew running. But it, it normally you can get there, and within ten minutes you're on a train going the direction, and, and that's going to stop where you need it to stop. And it was half an hour or more mm. each time. 
Um, surprising how inconvenient that is when you don't have it. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so I give Smuckers this ticket, and I tell them this is good for the train that'll take you from the town of Cologne across the Rhine River over to the, um, it's called the Köln Messe. The Messe is a convention center. And his eyes get real big, and he's like, really? I can take the train? I said, yes, but I need to show you something. And first thing I showed him is how dates are written in Europe, right? Where we start with the month, then the day, then the mm. year. They start with the day, the month, the year. And I pointed out, also they do a period instead of a slash or anything like that. So I pointed out to him that the only the only problem is the ticket is good two weeks ago only. <laughs> I said, so you're going to have to find a way to time travel. Easy. Now, what's amazing is, now my grandson is not quite six years old. His brain took off. And he's talking with me about how, okay, so if I can time travel, I can go back to any one of those five days and I can travel on the train, right? That's right. So I'll see you there then. I said, (laughs) yes, you will. But the only problem is we'll both have the same ticket. (laughs) <laughs> so we we get went to talking all around on this and, and so he says all right so i need to find a way to time travel and that'll get me to germany i said no hold on a second you're confusing mm. things there's time travel mm-hmm. and there's teleportation mm. and so then we get off on this whole conversation about the difference hey, the between teleportation and time travel and then, it, and then, so his dad is jumping in on this and saying, <coughs> you know, that's right, Jensen, you have to have two different machines. And, um, and so, so, so then, then Smucker says, I think if no one's invented it yet, I'll make one machine that will time travel and teleport me. Now, he's already using the, this big word. Right. And um, <laughs> I, I got to talk with him about how... You, uh, and we're now arguing with his dad about the fact that, hey, hold on a second. At home, I got a machine that I can scan, I can fax, I can make copies, and I can a print. A Swiss Army knife of time travel. That's right. And if I can do all those things on one machine, by golly, by the time we figure out how to time travel and how time to teleport. relative dimension in space. Those two things ought to come together. But the funniest part to me, though, was him talking about how he'll be able to see me on mm-hmm. the train when he gets back there. And, oh, and then he suggested that I go with him. I said, well, that could cause a problem. <laughs> so we got to talking about uh, you know, the space-time continuum and problems with it. So he determined that if we're on two different trains, two different cars, that we would be okay. But he could go back and he could visit me on the other car and uh-huh. tell me that the future me is in the other car, but that we would keep us, keep keep, us separated. Keep separate. And I said, well, how would we know which car to be on? And he's like, you were already on it. <laughs> Like, and it's the one for your ticket. He's, he's so smart. Yeah, he's so smart, and it just it was fun to to talk with him about that. And you know, he's taking it serious. And who knows, he might be the guy that figures that out. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's funny that he brings this up because um, right before we came over to film, I had made it about twenty minutes into Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I had this this sad thought. That crossed my mind thinking about my son Ender. He is. I'm going to have to explain to him what a phone booth is. <laughs> He's not going to have any idea. So when it shows up outside of the Circle K, what is you know it? they're they're like they, they, yeah they say wow that's weird um, that no they say strange, I know strange things well, are afoot at the Circle K. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. They say that after the second phone booth appears. That's kind of good. Well, that's because it makes more sense the second time. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, they've just brought Napoleon back. So I haven't made it that far. But Short Dead um, Dude. Hmm? Short Dead Dude. Yeah. That's not a very long movie. It's not. It's like a, it's less than an hour and a half long. It's a great movie. Oh, yeah. And I like Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Yeah. Well, I and, really do and like that And rumor is... If they can get all their ducks in a row, they're going to do a number three. My gosh. Rumor is they'll do a number three. Um, I mean, what's Keanu doing anyway? Uh, John Wick. Good movie. If you I like did some like action. John Wick. You're like right. Some, that was, now, that was the first thing he's done since... The Matrix. He did a samurai movie. 
But yeah, since the mm. Matrix, really. What was his? Uh, it was the Last Samurai. A thousand, no, no, no. <laughs> the, yeah, a thousand Ronin. Something. Yeah. Twelve Ronin. Ronin. Some number thousand. of Ronins. Ro- Ro- Ronnie's <laughs> Ronins. Yeah, it's um. Smuckers, it's a it's a smart point. Um, you know that you think about think about all of the sci-fi time machines, and some of them allow for location travel, like the phone booth in Bill and Ted, right? Um, uh, or but the, the TARDIS. original, the time machine, the original, original that doesn't that doesn't go anywhere. No, nope. it sits still. Um, uh, the DeLorean doesn't mm-hmm. change location. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It has to get. Uh, 88 miles an hour to do its thing. But then they're they're right in the same spot. Right, right where they leave, yeah. Um, which is something I never never thought about until this moment. And they don't they don't go anywhere. Um, hmm. TARDIS can go wherever it wants. Bill and Ted can it's sad that Bill and Ted have a more powerful time machine than Marty McFly. <laughs> That's true. But the Wonka Vader does. It just moves uh, well, and it's, sideways and slant ways. And yes, it does. Don't cry. <laughs> and there is that one button that, that Willie never pressed. Remember, remember that time you gave Smuckers a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> I'm opening Kinder Eggs over there in Germany. I'm I saw that video, too. Open. Well, did you see the one egg? Mm. I crack open one of the eggs, and the little thing on the inside was gold. Completely different color. And I'm and and my heart starts. Skipping. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing special. It was, you know that that particular thing was probably made in Romania or someplace. But I got all excited that maybe I'd gotten my golden ticket mm. finally. So, no, no such no such luck. <laughs> all right, what do you think of the Savinelli Black Cavendish? It's okay. I mean, it's it's a Black Cavendish. There's there's nothing special about it, but there's nothing bad about it either. No, it's I could smoke it. Yeah, it, it is. Um, I don't mind that it has no smell. That it really has no casing. Um, mm-hmm. Doesn't seem to. But so it, it burns pleasant. down to nothing. There's no goop. There's. I mean, it's just uh, ash. gray ash when it's all said and done. Which is a kind of kind of a, a neat feat when you're used to smoking aromatics that end up with a lot of dawdle. Yep. Um, what do you think of your Shire? Oh, I, I I like it actually. I like the distance. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, I are you clenching at all, or do you clench? Not usually. Not usually. It's it is a little bit long. Um, you got a little bit of a hmm, a bit my lip. <laughs> you got a little bit of a it wasn't funny. I'm sorry. A fulcrum mm. problem with this. It's it's just a, a little long, and the stem is a little too narrow. Yeah. Well, th- this is where it does come in handy, my method of clenching my pipe. The fact that I will put that in right along in alignment with my molars. Like this? Like that. So I'm biting down. No, not straight in, oh. moron. Huh. Yeah, I do that as well. So I can hold this like this, but, you know. It's just it's a little front heavy. i like to see you clench the... The wizard. I don't need to. I'm good. Can you hold it with your in your lap? <laughs> That's right. Mm. I tell you what, this elf is nice. That's it's a nice size. Mm-hmm. It's it's got a size roughly the size of the um, a country gentleman, mm. right? As far as the boar is concerned, it's the same boar, same size boar mm. on the chamber. So it's going to have the same capacity. Oh, one thing I didn't show you. Where'd that little, uh, where'd that little dwarf go? The little Morgan. Flip it over and take a look at what's on the bottom. It's a, I don't know. It's a wooden plug. Oh, don't they? Morgans don't have wooden they bottoms. Don't. That's been, that's been the the one frustration with the Morgan is it's got such a thin bottom, and it, if they have a sticker, they don't have a wooden bottom on them. So this is the whole reason why I created the Aristocob Miracle Mud. Right. Was because of that pipe because it was so yeah. thin on the bottom. That one's got yeah, that, definitely it's got a wood bottom. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I I forgot that they didn't have it. It's, it's um, that's cool. So 
We have these for now. I'm not sure what the future right. holds for these Cobbets because Missouri Mearsham is finding them to be quite challenging. And what that means is as they produce them, they have a much higher defect rate. Mm. And so it costs them more, obviously, to produce them. Initially, they weren't going to even sell these through resellers like Aristocob. But they finally have gotten to the point where they can, can do it. they got enough inventory. The one that they're going to have trouble keeping us in is the wizard. And uh, our first batch already gone. And mm. so we're, we're waiting on more of those. Um, also, there was some talk at the pipe show in Chicago, which we didn't attend, about this pipe. And this is one that Chris Morgan made me. It's a variation on the pipe that he made for our Cobb Foolery mm-hmm. contest a couple years ago, which is a reverse calabash. And uh, Missouri Mearsham was showing these and taking pre-orders. Cool. These. Now, again, same situation where their their plan was to not sell these through resellers. They would make them available. Chris Morgan has got a list for people that can buy them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Missouri Mearsham will make somewhere between 150 and 200 of them. Um, Aristocob is going to get a small supply of these. I haven't decided exactly what we're going to do with those hmm. because um, it's kind of a special pipe, you know? Yeah. Um, I'll figure that out once we have them, and, of course, I'll make an announcement about it. But it's really exciting. I'm excited for Chris because yeah. that's something that uh, is a special pipe that I kind of hated to see it only in one or two mouths. It's yeah. kind of cool that Missouri Mearsham took that on themselves along with Chris, to work on this and to, and to make enough modifications to it that they could make put this into production. So not an inexpensive pipe, not for everybody, but for those who uh, who appreciate something that's got some, Art- some rarity yeah. to it. And, yeah, um, that's, a, that'll, that's available. That's cool. Pretty cool. He calls it the, um, what does he call it? The Cobb Bee or something like that? Wasp? The bumble cob, <laughs> because this this end looks like a stinger here or something. So, yeah, definitely bumble cob. <laughs> <laughs> It'll sting you in the mouth. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, yeah, I like the tobacco. Sim- yeah, simple and just does the job. I'm liking the job, Seven Elite. I'm liking these because they they are s- cool smoking because mm. of the long stem. Yeah. But not crazy. I mean, the thing about this one is you couldn't really smoke this anywhere other than sitting in your rocker or sitting right. on your porch. Um, I could conceivably see myself smoking this one in the, in the car because I can. Yeah. But uh, just waiting for my defective airbag to not go off. <laughs> yeah, the, the long stem didn't have as much of a temperature uh, effect on the temperature as I, I expected. It never does. Yeah. Everybody expects that. Sort of like how you expect a hookah to be cooler, and yet the hookah picks up a lot of moisture. And the hookah kinda, is cooler. Right, but it counters that counteracts the coolness by the fact that it's a very moist smoke, which can burn your tongue. Anyway, hey, we're on a whole different topic. We should wrap this up. All right, bye, guys. We will see you guys next week. Make it a great week. Uh, this time, next week, I will have a, a baby. So... Oh, that's right. And this time next week, I will be in Texas. Cool. So, uh, so that some, means we have to get time to, we have to we'll get be, together. We have we'll to get be together. pre-filming oh, yeah. next week's next week's episode. But um, follow Aris Cobb or Seth Markwood on Instagram uh, if you want to see baby pictures, video, Great. Um, more up to date stuff. Hey, that I have one more thing to say. All right, do it. Um, this is the last week for the Summers Woodworking Two by Four contest which I am still hoping to get uh, a project finished so I can enter it. But uh, if you're not following that, go over to the Mr. Tool Hunter channel and check that out, and there's links to the official contest. And uh, folks like me and you are taking an 8-foot 2x4 and trying to build a project from it. So kind You know what would be an fun, excellent project cool. for 2x4? What's that? Something a to let me wreck. put this freaking thing down. I've tried to put it down five times, and I, I can't do it. There's no place for it. I'm just stuck. Maybe like if there's anything left from my 2 by 4 I'll drill a hole in it that for you. That would be great. Please. <laughs> please and thank you. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. Have a great week.